What's up YouTube? This is Sir Hunt's Reviews. I'm Mark and in this video I'm going to be giving my breakdown for Game of Thrones Season 6 Episode 7 The Broken Man as well as a few predictions for Game of Thrones Season 6 Episode 8 entitled No One. Sandor Clegane is back. Ray, character played by Ian McShane, her elder brother as we know him from the novels, says that he watched Sandor heal and that also he thought that Sandor died several times throughout the healing process. Shortly thereafter, some Brotherhood Without Banners members show up and they ask the encampment, they encampment, they're talking to Ray mainly, they say, do you have food supplies, do you have steel, anything like that, and they leave with a parting, be careful, because the night is dark and full of terrors. Later on, the Hound is off chopping some wood, um, Ray shows up, he has kind of a conversation with them, and he says, hey look man, why don't you come back and eat, and there might even be some ale stashed for you when you finish up, and... Brotherhood Without Manners end up showing up and they kill off everybody in the settlement, which is very similar to the wildlings, I might add, except for they don't eat them. But the hound grabs his axe and heads out. We also see the hound beheading someone with the axe in the preview for episode 8. Um, I think that's one of the members of the Brotherhood Without Banners. <clears throat> then we get John and Sansa, and they are beginning to rally anyone willing to join Team the North is supposed to remember, goddammit. I believe he, uh, John has the easiest time talking to the wildling simply because they can relate to him since he's technically born to a high house but he's also a bastard. So they relate to him on that and they also relate to him how he basically saved their lives. Tormund jumps in and helps a bunch by saying that if they don't help John, who died for them, then they are cowards and they might as well be the last of the wildlings. Tormund also has a few lines from that huge trailer back in March. Sansa... I thought would step up and be able to rally the Glovers to their cause, but things don't quite play out that way. She mentions how they are supposed to remain loyal to the Starks, and he remarks by saying, well the Boltons helped him take back Deepwood Mott from the Ironborn, and he may get flayed just from having talked to Sansa and Jon. Um, he ends it up with a big fat House Stark is dead, and I feel like since they skipped over showing the Hornwoods. Later on when they're like counting all the troops and shit, they do say that they have a few Hornwoods. I think that they skipped over showing, rallying the Hornwoods and introduced us to the Glovers for a reason. I think the Glovers may still have a part to play in the wars to come. Davos steps up and is able to rally the Mormonts. I think that she can relate to them more. Maybe, I don't know, I might be reaching a little bit, but she does, he does look a little bit like Jorah Mormont, so maybe she he reminds Lyanna of someone in her family. Um, but Davos is successfully recruits their 62 men. And we also see that Lyanna shows up, and she's at the encampment with Sansa and Jon later on when they're recounting how many troops they have. I do also want to add that that conversation between Jon and Sansa is pretty interesting because Sansa is basically questioning Jon's decision on why he made <clears throat> Davos his advisor just because he was able to get... 62 men from the Starks or from the Mormonts. It's pretty interesting. Um, we do see that maybe Sansa will be a little bit more like her book counterpart and become like her mother in the sense that she will eventually despise Jon. Maybe she will try to renounce him somehow and become the true Queen of the North. I don't know. It's interesting to see that they're showing this this early on in their reunion slash relationship groundwork that they have to relay. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. We do actually see Sansa later on writing that note, and I want you guys to let me know what you think down in the comment section, what it says. I think that part of it was visible, but I don't really have the time to go back and look. Hopefully they will release it like they did with that note that was handed to Duran Martell and Dorne back in episode one. So if they do that, we'll know, but if not, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. Arya is then... Shown in Bravos, where she walks up to this dude and she basically offers him payment in order to get back to Westeros the very next day. So she goes on a bridge and she looks at the city of Bravos. So she looks at the Titan of Bravos, to be exact. And she's caught off guard. She lets her defenses down. I do want to say real quick where the fuck was Needle, but she ends up getting stabbed. The waif shows up wearing someone else's face, the face of an old woman, and she says, Sweet girl. And so Arya turns around and then she gets stabbed, very reminiscent to how Jon Snow was stabbed back in season five i do want to say that it looks like she's able to find some kind of help um she does have a change of clothes and she's wearing a green shirt we do have a quick shot of waif from the trailer and she turns around and looks stunned so i'm thinking that she assumes Arya died when she fell into that river next up is cersei and marjorie 
in King's Landing. We do see Cersei attempt to team up with Olena, Olena, Queen of Thorns. Not fucking happening. She tells Cersei the only joy she can get from having her grandbabies taken from her and locked up in a cell is seeing that Cersei is completely fucked. I'm going to go ahead and say that Cersei will in fact burn King's Landing to the fucking ground. And Olena helped her realize that she's back into a corner surrounded by thousands and thousands of enemies. From the trailer for episode 8, we see that Cersei is attempted to be brought in for a trial by Lancel and some other sparrows. But the mountain is there, and she gives them that famous Cersei wanted so badly to choose violence. I do think Lancel may die in this incursion. That's another prediction for episode 8. We also see that Margie T is a real strong player in the Game of Thrones, and she learned from one of the best, her grandmother. <clears throat> she handed Olena a scrunched up piece of paper that had a Tyrell rose inscribed on it. Looks like she drew it with a little pencil, whatever. Signifying that she is still loyal to House Tyrell, and she's only dealing with the fuckery to get good, to get her brother, good old broke back mountain Loris Tyrell. At one point, Jamie is trying to convince Braun, "Look, man, we need you in this army," and he says some shit like, "You have better instincts than anyone in the Lannister army." And Braun responds with. That's like telling me I have a bigger cock than anyone in the Unsullied. We do get a little bit of Ironborn action this episode. Not the too juicy, but basically there's a conversation. They are at what appears to be somewhere nearing Volantis. And Yara is making out with a woman. And Theon sees all these titties. And it makes him feel really uncomfortable. Because obviously nothing's going on down there. And he used to be someone who loves the fluff. But... He can't get none no more, so he feels really uncomfortable, so Yara basically has to tell her dusky woman, who I thought was the dusky woman, but obviously it's not. She sent her away, and she talks to Theon, and she says, look, dude, she basically gives him some Vikings-type savagery where she says, if you're done, you're done. Slit your wrist and get it over with. But if you want to become the Theon that I know and love and not this shell of a person, fake poser motherfucker, then... Pull your shit together, drink this. She was like peer pressuring the shit out of him, but she was like, drink this, and she's like encouraging him more and more. So it, w it was pretty like a touching scene, I guess, if you want to say. I don't know. Nothing too juicy, but nonetheless, we did get to see like six pairs of boobs. So we do see in this episode that Jamie and Blackfish have an exchange of like basically who can sound the most badass, and it doesn't go well. Which causes Jamie to go back to the encampment to make the frayed troops more formidable. Basically saying that the next time we see the blackfish outside of River Runner up on his little shit, he's gonna be standing he's gonna be facing down an army, not the, the, the shitty ass freight troops that we see right now. It looks like JJ and Bree B have that much anticipated reunion, and she may in fact inform her of Inform him of her new chicken foot sucking bearded hipster wildling heartthrob. I, I mean Tormund for those of you that don't know. Jamie convinces Brienne to try to get Blackfish to surrender. <clears throat> she tells him that if she cannot succeed in convincing the Blackfish to surrender River Run, then she will be forced to attack him for honor's sake. To attack Jamie, I mean. <clears throat> Which is why I think that further drives him into the arms of Cersei. And later on in the trailer, we see that. This is the trailer for episode 8 that I'm talking about. But later on in the trailer, we do see that Jamie tells Edmure he will kill as many Tullys as it takes to get back to his beloved Cersei. Now, he doesn't actually mention Cersei, and we don't actually see the face of the person who he's telling it to, but we see scraggly hair, so I automatically assume it's Edmure Tully. He is held captive by the phrase at this point, which we saw him at the beginning of the episode. <clears throat> Pod does end up getting choked out, and it's confirmation that it's Bronn. Um... Also, I think that Blackfish, Blackfish, in regards to what Brienne tries to convince him of, uh, if Brienne does get word, well, obviously she's sent there to get troops to bring back the Sansa. I don't know if she's going to tell Jamie that quite yet, but basically I think when she has that conversation with Blackfish, he will give her some troops and then keep some of them at River Run for, to help him with the siege. But he does say that he plans on dying in that castle, so I do think that Blackfish will die. Like I, I, I said, I just predicted it for this episode, and it didn't obviously didn't happen. But I think he plans on dying, and in doing so, he will keep a few troops there uh, to help with the siege that Jamie's going to lay upon him, and then he will give the rest to Brienne to take back to Sansa. 
Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please slap a like on it. it really helps out my channel. Um, the Jon Snow doll gift card giveaway is still going on, and that's in effect until June 30th. All you have to do to enter is subscribe, click like, and leave a comment down below. Uh, basically, it's just a gift card for the Jon Snow Funko Masters Collection. Uh, it's not the one with the big pop head. Uh, links to my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as always, are in the description. If you want to, you can click this video right here on the left for a five-hour live stream that I did uh, with a lot of Game of Thrones YouTubers from about two months ago. We cover every major event in Game of Thrones history, the TV show at least. Um, and also, it's five fucking hours, so yeah, you should check that out. It's actually like five and a half hours. Um, and you can click on the right for a link that I did... Uh, for a link to a video that I did, which is basically covering the events of the Bastard Bowl, get hype. It's an awesome video. Go check that out if you have time. As always, my name is Mark, and this has been Sir Hunt's Refuse. This video was made possible by my wonderful supporters over on Patreon. Click the link above if you'd like to become a part of the Hunter Army. And just remember, Winter is coming.